What is going on? It's, of course, your boy, Matty Milligan, back at it once again on the Underground Marketing Conspiracy. This is episode number eight, and it's actually almost been a year and a half, wow, since the last episode of this show and what it will eventually become my podcast. <sighs> Gotta say... It's been something that has been I've been wanting to work on for a while, and we're going to be talking today about top ways to re-engage dead subscribers. I felt it was the perfect title to come back to these videos with, especially after not being involved with these videos, or more so what will eventually be the podcast, but I've been working hard a lot for the last year and a half, really building out my business, and I recently left my full-time job just over three months ago. Wow, time flies super fast. And at first, I was just, I've just been so busy, focused on leaving my job and focused on acquiring more clients, and I just came to this epiphany recently that creating content is super important because people forget about you super quick and when you're creating content consistently it's just such a ninja hack to become an authority and expert in your niche and for build a lot of goodwill and trust and long-term relationships within your market so i need to make creating content a priority and publishing a priority and I need to do this a lot someone called me out on it yesterday one of my own coaches and I was like he's absolutely right like I I knew I needed to do it having paid traffic is great but if you can't get your organic traffic to convert then what's the use in paid advertising and hoping that your ads are going to work so I need to take publishing a lot more consistently so this is the way that i'm re-engaging my subscribers for my current youtube channel and what will eventually be like i said my podcast i have a bunch of ideas for shows that i'm actually going to be creating i haven't come up with an idea yet for what the different platforms are going to be the main five things i'm going to focus on are facebook instagram youtube linkedin and then my podcasting which i'll probably published through Libsyn, I think it's called, and then it just feeds to all the other ones, like the Spotify, or Spotify, the Spotify. Wow, I sound like an old man there. The Spotify. Arr! And after the Spotify, we got that Apple Store, and we got those other ones. All right, so back to seriousness, or back to being serious now. The main ideas I had, again, were... I was coming, going through these ideas earlier today, and I'm like, okay, what shows could I create what, on each distribution channel that I have? I have a bunch of ideas. One of them is Funnel Your Face Off, where I interview and sit down with people on a YouTube show, or eventually I could probably have a podcast out of that and just have the audio cut out of it, but it would be a show on YouTube where I sit down with someone, and we both have our ClickFunnels accounts open, and we have this other tool that I use called funnel scripts and we basically try and create a funnel as quickly as possible and it, i could i could do this with so many different angles where it's like i sit down with someone who already has maybe an e-com store and they want to do that or they already have an existing local business and i sit down with them and build out the funnel or i could just interview experts and really start going in that direction where i build a funnel with them and just ask them questions and joke around with them the whole time so that's one avenue so funnel your face off and the way I think I was thinking of that as well was I could have as the intro, it's like, hey, welcome to Funnel Your Face Off. And it has that shot of like John Travolta in the movie Face Off where he's like, I took his face off. Or actually, I think it was Nick Cage in that movie, but I would have some sort of relation to that movie. I think it would be super funny. And yeah, it would be really funny. And I have another couple of ideas. I had like scammers and spammers where I uncover all the people in the marketing online industry who are kind of sketchy and give the industry a bad reputation. But what I was also thinking of was making it instead where it's like, is so-and-so guru a scam or is so-and-so guru a fraud or is so-and-so guru, what did I have before? Is so-and-so, da, 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 I had a bunch of ideas, oh my God, where is it? Yeah. Is so-and-so guru a scammer? That's basically what it was. So or is this so it's like similar to these like worst of industry ones then i had another idea 
where it was, I've seen these React videos doing really well, specifically these this channel I follow called Corridor Crew, and they have these, what is it, VFX artists react to bad, or what is what do they call it? I think they have it as good or bad and great CGI, and they have 10 of these videos, man, and they crush it. Like, they do get millions of views. They're, they also have one where it's like Stuntman reacts to bad and great stunts. There's another guy doing, like, comic book... I think it was comic book or artist reacts to good and bad comics, something like that. These seem to do really well, these reaction videos. So I was thinking with those where I can sit down and just start to, I guess, look at old ad campaigns and see why they worked. And I can take specific industries and big companies and look at those. I'm not going to look at people's funnels necessarily. I might. It's a possibility. But I think really just looking at taking one company for each of those videos, like Apple, and be like, here's a good campaign they had. Here's a bad one. Like, let's look at McDonald's. Here's a good campaign they had. Here's a bad one. Things like that. Or having two or three different maybe ads throughout the video, and we have one that we focus on, and then I talk about different mechanics and really tell stories behind that specific ad campaign and why it did well or why it bombed, and really just share some stuff like that. Because that'll really help, I think, people who are just starting out in marketing and or as entrepreneurs and really help them understand what works for bigger companies who are marketing to the masses where everyone is basically like cold traffic but again these are probably more established brands so people know who they are so it's easier for them to sell things because they've spent so much money and so much time on branding but it'll really just give you i'll go through them and analyze them and look at what's working best for them so that's another idea. I have a bunch of other ad ideas that I had that were awesome. And I've made a list of all these, like, scammers, by the way. If you have any of them, I want you to actually just comment below on this video or on this podcast right now. And let me know if these ideas do resonate with you. Maybe you have some other ideas for shows that you would like to see on YouTube or on a podcast that you haven't seen before. But you're like, oh, this would be cool. Like, can you please do that? If you have any idea for a video, heck, please let me know what that is below this video. I would really appreciate that but those were my ideas but we're going to be talking today really quickly about top ways to re-engage dead subscribers so this is what i'm doing it's like when you don't come out with content for a while you just have to go to your audience and be like hey i'm sorry i was away for a while my bad here i am and really warm them up to you again because most likely at this point if anyone was following the podcast which i doubt anyone was at this point because I looked at the video stats and there's maybe 10 views on one of them. <laughs> so it's not doing well that far, but again, I'm creating this podcast so that on episode 200, when people start to find out about me, or probably realistically like 500 because so many people have podcasts these days, once people start hearing episode 500, they'll go back and be like, wow, these videos are really good. Let's go back to the beginning. And they'll go back to the beginning. And they'll see those first seven episodes. And then episode eight will be completely different. And they're going to notice my voice and what I'm talking about changes throughout the process. So that's essentially what I'm doing at this point. And again, I really need to be consistent and really re-engage my dead subscribers who might have forgotten about me at this point. Otherwise, your subscribers could also be your email list. And again, they've probably forgotten about you. And this is a mistake. Oh man, it's probably, I would say it's 90%, if not 95% or higher, where businesses spend all this money on lead generation and build these huge massive lists, or even small lists in some cases, and they never email their list ever, which is a huge mistake. And what I'm doing right now is I'm actually creating these videos in advance. So that way I have a buffer where when I do start to re-engage my subscribers, I can keep doing it, right? Whereas, Because sending one video or one email to your list or to your followers or, or doing one post, it's like a drop of water in the ocean. It doesn't make any impact whatsoever. It's completely negligible. But if you have a consistent stream of content, heck, it doesn't need to even be on multiple channels like I'm going to try and do. It can just be one specific channel as long as you're consistent, you'll start to grow organically. And then again, you find that one piece of content and that's when you put money into it. But 
that's what you need to do when you re-engage your subscribers. You can't push them with offers and stuff because they forgot about you. And if you come out like swinging and, and you know, giving them those right hooks right away, they're not going to buy from you and you're going to lose a lot of trust right away and credibility and integrity. And you're going to bring a lot of bad will to your market. So instead, just lead with value and start doing what I'm doing. Like make a list of topics that I tell all my consulting and coaching clients to do. Make a list of 50 to 100 topics in your niche. Do some research on, oh man, I say this till I'm blue in the face, but make a list of topics. Use Reddit AMA, use Quora, use Google questions, use, or sorry, Yahoo questions, use Google keyword tool, use BuzzSumo. Go out and find, go into forums and Facebook groups and find the topics and questions people are have in your market and then answer those in your own voice that's such an easy formula for content tell stories about your stuff build some goodwill for a while and then eventually make an offer to buy something from you and it can be inexpensive it can be big ex very expensive it depends just have a call to action eventually but at first if you come out and people have forgotten about you, you're going to need to warm them up again. So if it's an email list, like send them a few value emails where it's like, dude, I just created this awesome podcast. First episode after a year and a half, I'm restarting my podcast. I just talked about how to do the same and re-engage your subscribers. So that's what you need to do, right? Like that's what I'm doing. And again, this is a YouTube video, but it'll eventually be a podcast. But that's the strategy that I'm going to be utilizing very forward. And I recommend you do the same. And again, it can be something where any social media channel that you want to do, but it needs to be some sort of distribution channel in that communication thing. Heck, it might even just be something where maybe you have clients that you've worked with and they pay you recurring. And you're just like, hey man, I want to touch base with you. Like let's let's catch up on a call. That might be a good way for you to re-engage them. And then from there you find out about some other problems they have. And then that's an opportunity for you to upsell them on another package that you have or another product or another service that you have, right? But again, you need to re-engage them and get them back into conversation. Have that follow-up with people in place. And this doesn't necessarily need to be, like I said, email or it needs to, it can be really just anything. You need to be re-engaging people because there's this old thing people always talking, talk about, talky, <laughs> talk about in sales and marketing where it requires about, on average, eight points of contact for before you actually sell someone and make that sale. There's also this old, or this thing that Frank Kern talks about where in your market, 5% of the people are ready to buy right now. So there, that's probably where 95% of the people in your market are advertising to. So they're like, oh man, people have the, they know they have, they might have the problem. Like we're just going to try and sell them because they're going to buy within that first 30 day window. <clears throat> I should have brought in water for this because I'm very stuffed up after a whole summer of allergies. But 5% of people are going to buy within the first next 30 days. And that's cool. So everyone's trying to market to them. The biggest percentage, though, of people are going to buy within that probably 31 to 90 day time frame, though, probably 50 to 60 to maybe even 70 percent of the people in your market. So if you're smart, you're going to be having messages in those next 30 days where guess what? You're going to bring people pure value and have those different touch points. And maybe they see one of one of your YouTube videos. I'm like, oh, that was cool. And then maybe they see an Instagram post you have. And then maybe they you send them an email and you have those multiple things. And they're like, oh, like this guy's bringing me lots of value. And then again, 30, day 31, you can make that pitch. You could even do it a little bit longer. Like for the first 60 days, release content. Even then, like you could have it probably where for the next 21 days, you release a bunch of content. And then for the last week after that, on like day 22 to 30, then you just start making some offers and add, that way you have a deadline, oh man, this is great. So month long campaign for you right now, this is what you're gonna do <laughs> to re-engage your subscribers. You're gonna spend the next 21 days building out content, all right? You're gonna release a video, a piece of content every single day for the next 21 days. Then you're gonna have a, an offer that you've already created, something you're gonna sell at the end of that on day 22 to 30, and you're gonna add a deadline to that offer. 
and you're never going to give it away ever again. I see marketers make this mistake where they use these false urgency and scarcity tactics, but it's like on day 30, the checkout is literally going to close forever. That way you're going to sign people up. You're going to build that email list. You're going to build that whole buzz and all of that urgency and scarcity around that offer. Then dude, when that cart closes, oh man, so many people are going to be rushing. I've seen these campaigns like work like clockwork. This is why Black Friday and Cyber Monday are so effective because you have that. So again, have it where you're like releasing tons of content on a specific topic, talking about problems in your market giving people solutions, giving them different ideas, busting false belief patterns they have and myths and objections, and then making them an offer. And then again, ending that and then going through that again and again and again. That's such an easy thing that you can do to increase. And this dude, this works for any industry, e-commerce, affiliate marketing, high ticket sales, coaching, service-based businesses, this would work for anyone where it's like, oh, dude, like, here's some value. Oh, now we have an offer. Oh, cool. Like, da, 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 da. Like, this is, this is a no-brainer. And what you could do, too, is that way you found, again, the best posts that are going to work out of those 21 you create, you'll find one of them that's going to stand out. That's the piece of content that you can put some ad spend into and boost and show to more people. And you can do this on Facebook, on YouTube, on Instagram, super easily on LinkedIn. I think they have video ad. No, they don't have a video campaign yet, but they probably will eventually. But that's the strategy that I would use to, again, re-engage your dead subscribers, which is super, super important. And you're hearing it from the lips that someone that is in the process of doing this in this video. So hold me accountable and make sure that I'm doing these. Because if you watch this and then you're like, oh, dude, you didn't create a video after this. What's wrong with you, Maddie? Then I'll be like, dude, you totally got me, man. Like Walter White in Breaking Bad when his brother-in-law Hank finds out that he's a meth dealer. He's like, you got me <laughs> as a joke. So that's what I would do to re-engage your subscribers. But it's super important that you build, build content, create it, bring it out consistently once you do decide to start re-engaging your subscribers and your followers and building your brand. All right. Ooh, this was a very jam-packed episode. I didn't listen to the other ones, one through seven, so I'm sure my tone and my voice and what I talk about is a little bit different. I know I still talk way too fast, and I still have a lot of ums and ahs and you knows and like, uh, like this, like that. It's something I'm working on improving but hopefully you got value of this. If you're listening to my podcast somewhere in the future, I want you to subscribe. I don't know what platform you'll be listening to this on, but if you're watching this on YouTube, which is where I'm going to publish this first of all, I want you to hit that subscribe button, but more so I want you to ding and ding ding that bell. So that way you're notified when the next episode of the Underground Marketing Conspiracy show comes out. Oh yeah, I also have the idea, I forgot to mention, I have the Manny Milligan show, I think that might be my podcast, but I think the underground marketing conspiracy sounds very like cool, and it goes into this whole Illuminati conspiracy thing, which I'm super interested in, think is pretty funny in some cases, but this will be the main distribution channel, the underground marketing conspiracy, so I want you to subscribe, and I will be out with the next episode tomorrow. Do not have an idea for what that topic will be, but I'm going to list out topics we can discuss on the Underground Marketing Conspiracy Show. All right, awesome. Really appreciate you watching this video. I'm glad to be back on another episode of this, and I will see you next time. Have yourself an awesome day. Peace out.